Hello everyone and welcome back to Promises to Keep, episode 3. We've been making pretty steady progress, we're about halfway through. Granted, I, I have played this game multiple times as someone who is on the development team, so just a fair warning. But I know we're probably about halfway through, so after this we only have one more episode. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start us off and not take any more time. Theo pushes the door open. Artemis is sitting in the middle of the floor, chatting with Rofi while he unpacks. Ollie, on the other hand, is scurrying around the room, holding five trailing cables in one hand and his phone in the other, muttering to himself. Just gotta put this here, and this cable should go on the desk, and, uh, oh gosh, who is texting me right now of all times? Uh, we interrupting anything? Oliver, are you, uh, finding everything you need? Ollie doesn't reply, now engrossed in answering his phone. He's just getting organized. As hard as that is to believe. I'd say he moves faster than me, which is, you know, pretty fast. Artemis gives Rofi a look. Yeah, I don't get the point of inviting me on walks if you're going twice my speed the whole time. Hey, I slow down for you sometimes. How Enigmus, I'm forever in your debt. Though I'm enjoying their banter, and I can tell Theo is too, the heavy box is starting to take its toll on my arms. I open my mouth, but struggle to break into the conversation. I sneak a glance at Hunter, but predictably, he doesn't seem to be struggling in the slightest. Anyway, that's good to hear. Just wanted to check in. Artemis, have you taken a look around your space yet? I know it's a basement, but I promise it's actually pretty comfortable. It's perfect for me. I don't need a lot of space. My eyes dart around the room, looking for a proper space to put this thing down. I rearrange my grip and I feel a jolt of pain through my wrist. Great. It was nice to think of you to trade rooms with Oliver. I suppose it can get a little chilly down there. Whoa, you never show me that kind of benev benevolence, Artie. I just know he'll be more comfortable up here. He can tell pretty minute differences in temperature and he gets anxious without any windows, too. Reaching my limit, I open my mouth to say something. But at that moment, I feel the box start to slip out of my paws. Before I can react, the handle slides neatly from my grip and drops like a stone. Oh, fuck. I see a flash of movement as Hunter lunges just in time. In a split-second reaction, he shifts his box onto his right arm and leans into a half-squat, perfectly catching the falling item from beneath. Woo! Warn me next time you're about to drop an expensive piece of tech. For a terrible moment, I just stand there, feeling the stares of everyone into the room boring into me. Even Ollie snapped out of his intense focus to watch. My ears flattened tight against my head. I... Oh god, I'm so, so sorry. My voice breaks the spell and Ollie zooms over to us, snatching the lid off the box and peering inside. He lets out a deep breath. Don't, don't worry about it. Nothing's broken. Oh, thank god. I, I was holding it just fine and then... No, please, don't apologize. No harm done, really. Ollie smiles and meets my eyes, and incredibly, I believe him. I smile back gratefully. Yeah, no harm done. I was just messing with you. Although, I hope y'all know I can't hold this pose forever. Oh, sorry. Ollie hops over to the desk, swiping a number of, obje number of objects off onto the floor. Ollie, I just organized the stuff you put there. You can leave them both here on the desk. Thank you so, so much. Hunter straightens with ease and languidly walks the two boxes over and turns to Theo. Need anything else, boss? Nope, that's it for now. Though, we'll call you if that changes. Always at your service. Hunter makes his way back to the room door, stopping next to me. Hey, I'm probably gonna head back to my room and relax a little. Wanna join? Rofi gasps in mock indignation, and is at my side in an instant, clutching my arm. I knew you were trying to steal Cobalt from me! Ah yes, Rofi's famous puppy dog eyes. As deadly as always. Whoa, easy there. I'm no thief. We can all just hang out in my room. The more the merrier, right? But there's this new game I want to try out, and I only have two controllers. I open my mouth to ask why we can't just take turns, and then I realize. He wants to spend more time with me alone, just the two of us playing video games, 
like back in the old days. Hunter laughs and leans forward, committing to Rofi's bit. Don't be greedy, Rofi. You two have known each other for so long. Cobalt and I have to make up for lost time. Oh, look at his face. The raccoon gives me a knowing look, a twinkle of amusement in his eye. Oh, I love that expression. That is my favorite expression I did of him. Uh, seems like someone wants one-on-one -on -one time with you, Cobalt. But for real, it's your choice. Just know my door's always open, too. Rofi giggles, breaking character for a moment, before snapping back into that lethal pout. Oh, of course. Feel free to leave poor old Rofi behind. Those eyes used to destroy me. But now I can see his laughter behind them. I don't think he'll actually be mad if I hang out with Hunter for an hour or two. After all, we'll have plenty of time to spend together over the next few days, or however long it takes. It really was my choice. Who should I hang out with? Okay, I'm incredibly biased towards Hunter, because he was one of my favorites to design besides Artemis. So, if anyone wants me to play through all the, uh, all the routes I don't choose, let me know in the comments, but otherwise, I am uh, a huge Hunter fan, so... I know Rofi wanted some alone time with me, but I wanted to get to know Hunter, too. I turned to the raccoon. To be honest, I'm pretty tired, so relaxing in your room sounds fun. Hunter pumps his fists in the air. Yes! Considering the fact that we'd literally just met, Hunter's enthusiasm was very flattering. And very sweet. Aw oh, man, I'll be all alone. Those eyes were dangerous, but having already made my choice, my resolve is strong. For now. I look pointedly at Hunter, avoiding eye contact with the sly dog. But it's already too late for the raccoon. Don't give me those eyes, you know I can't handle them. They stare at one another. For a prolonged moment locked in a deadly battle and then suddenly break into raucous laughter Ruff, you make it too easy rofi you could just join us you know nothing is stopping you rofi seems to consider for a second then shakes his head nah i've been really dying to play this new game all my old college friends are picking it up and i gotta get good at it besides i think i'm too wired right now to just relax that i could believe some of the tension in my shoulders fades. He clearly wasn't upset. Well, don't get too good at that game. Otherwise, you'll just beat us every time. No promises. Rofi turns to me with his trademark warm smile. I see you've become puppy eye resistant since childhood. Very impressive. I'll have to come up with some new tricks. You two have fun. We'll definitely have time to hang out later, Cobalt. And with a flash of his orange tail, he's gone, skipping down the hall. Dang, did he say childhood? Y'all go back a long way, huh? Uh, yeah, it's a long story, actually. To be honest, I really didn't want to get into it with Hunter right now. The raccoon nods, clearly picking up on my retinence. Hey, no worries. Anyway, my room's just down the hall. As we walk down the hallway, I watch him hop from paw to paw, jumping to touch the ceiling with each movement. I can't help but notice his toned legs every time he springs upwards. In my defense, they looked huge flexing to support his frame. Judging from their interaction earlier, he seems to be the only one here who can match Rofi's energy level. Hunter stops in front of his room door and then strikes a pose. And now I present my humble abode, also known as Theo's spare room. I take a few steps in and look around. A laptop and some folders are stacked neatly on the desk. On top of the stack sits a binder labeled Fall Semester in remarkable penmanship. The same perfect handwriting covers a few spare papers, presumably schoolwork of some sort. I spot a collection of dumbbells and a sturdy-looking workout bench against the wall. The whiteboard perched above them catches my eye. Hunter's workout routine looks pretty serious. I think back to the box fiasco and my arms twinge in pain. His bed is made up of... His bed is made up neatly as well from the perfectly symmetrical blankets to the fluffed-up pillows. Wow, it's so... Tidy? I get that a lot. Hunter walks over to his bed and takes a seat. Don't believe everything you hear about raccoons. I clear my throat and shuffle my feet, realizing how that first statement came out. He was right, though. 
I was expecting something closer to the chaos in Ollie's room, especially after seeing how my how especially after seeing how my admittedly few sporty friends lived in college. Right, right, sorry. My mind is open to the possibilities now. I mime a mind blown motion around my head, which earns a smile from Hunter. Good to hear. Feel free to take a look around. I'm just gonna chill here. By the way, mind if I play some music? Helps me chill. Go for it. Some kind of hip-hop slash R&B? Up-tempo, but still relaxing with a strong beat. Seems fitting. I walk over to the desk, mostly just to admire the handwriting on the binder. Did you write this? Yeah. He beams proudly. When I was a kid, we had someone come over once a week to teach me how to write like that. I'm, I'm happy I still got it. I resist the urge to raise an eyebrow. I had no idea those kinds of people exist. I mean, a handwriting tutor? That feels pretty fancy. My eyes land on the dumbbells on the workout bench again, and I can't help but ask. Did you, uh, carry these here through the storm? He laughs a little. Nah, just the dumbbells. Gotta stay in shape somehow, and a little snow isn't gonna stop me. Or a lot of snow, for that matter. The bench was just laying around in Theo's basement, and he said that I could use it while I was here. Just the dumbbells, huh? Unbelievable. Same with that thing. He points to the medicine ball under the desk. Though, I guess I should give you a heads up, there's no actual chair in this room. Theo said there used to be one, but it broke. But there's plenty of room next to me if you want to sit. Hunter was overestimating a little. The raccoon's limbs were taking up most of the space, and I'd have to get pretty close to him if I wanted to sit down. But I guess it wasn't that big a deal? Oh, we all know where we're going. We want snuggles. I mean, if he feels comfortable offering, then I don't mind sharing the bed with him. I nod and take a seat next to him, sinking in just a little. The mattress is nice and firm. Memory foam, maybe? I think of my creaky old mattress at home and settle in further. I could get used to this. Anyway, sorry, what were we talking about before? Your tidiness, I think? But, uh, we can stop if I'm prying too much. Nah, I don't mind. My parents only started pushing me towards athletics in high school, so I wasn't really sporty for most of my life. And they always wanted to keep our houses spotless, so I grew up being super conscious about neatness and cleanliness. Did he say houses? With an S? I make a mental note of that, but continue the conversation. That's interesting. I feel like all the college athletes I've known have started when they were kids. Yeah, my journey was a little unique there. I actually tried a bunch of different things. Well, my parents made me, but still. And none of it ever really stuck until high school. I see. And do you like... I stopped mid-sentence, realizing I didn't actually know what sport he played yet. He raises his eyebrows and smirks mischievously at me, clearly waiting for me to guess. Like... Okay, fun fact about being a developer. I know the answer. I don't know, gymnastics? Hunter looks at me, clearly a little surprised. That was totally a guess, right? You didn't cheat. I stick my tongue out playfully at him and he snickers at my reaction. I guess you and Rofi are old friends. Maybe he was rubbing off on me. Meeting him had activated some of my old habits. Okay, well, do you like it? I mean, yeah, it's fine. I guess I view it as more of a way to stay fully fit. It just requires so many muscle groups and movements that you end up bulking every part of your body in some way. And the perks don't hurt either. Perks? Well, my school treats its athletes really well. And we usually get good scholarships, private trainers, and exclusive dining hall and gym. Hold up. You get a dining hall all to yourselves? Yup. It's hidden somewhere on our campus. Secret location and everything. But, I mean, they don't check student IDs, so you can just walk in if you know where it is. You just have to look the part of the athlete. And they have private chefs that cook hot meals for us and dietitians on site to help us hit nutrient goals. And the rest of us are stuck eating garbage? Suddenly I feel cheated out of my tuition money. You didn't already feel cheated by everything else? Honestly, ancient professors reading off pre-made lecture slides and calling that class? I've never been so bored in my life. Okay, but this is so real as a college student. <laughs> it's not like I'm ever going to need most of that information. Just a waste of time. But whatever, I'm not paying much tuition anyway, so I can't really complain. He shrugs and throws his arms behind his head, flopping backwards onto the bed. I sit silently for a few moments. 
that was the most negative emotion I'd heard him express yet. I was admittedly curious about how much tuition he actually did pay, but definitely didn't feel comfortable asking him that yet. I decided to change the subject. So, how long have you and Rofi known each other? Oh, that puppy dog? We've been friends for a bit now, like two years? He was actually my tutor when I was a freshman. We get private tutors to make sure we maintain our grade minimums. And I was lucky enough to get Rofi as mine. The more Hunter speaks, the more apparent it becomes that I should have traded my academic aspirations for a colleague sport. So that would make this your junior year? Yep. I know he's older than me, but he gives off so much puppy energy. Those eyes. No kidding. I'm surprised I was able to resist earlier. What a wild coincidence. Rofi and Hunter went to the same college and now all three of us are staying in the same house? Seems almost too weird to be true. Yo, you look a little uncomfy. The raccoon's voice breaks me out of my thoughts. He makes a show of nestling into the pillows near the headboard. Sitting like that must be murder on your back. He says that right as I remember to fix my posture. Okay, what do you suggest then? With a big smile, Hunter pats the spot on the bed next to him. Here, come lay down. I know we just met, but I feel comfy around you. Besides, there really is no good way to sit on this bed without killing your back. His voice is teasing, his eyes playful. For a long moment, I'm completely silent, heart kicking into high gear. What do I say? Sorry, a little too forward? I lay around with my bros all the time. It's not a huge deal. I guess he's right. Things are just happening a little fast is all. Just relax. I grin back at him. Your bros, huh? Yeah, my teammates. Straightest dudes I've ever met. But they're not toxic about it. All really chill guys. If I'm being honest, I felt a little relieved that Hunter didn't immediately mark me as queer. Or at least it seemed like he hadn't. And would it matter anyway? Oh, whatever. Let's go for it. I twitch my tail out of the way and roll onto my back, scooching up the length of the bed until I'm next to him. I can taste his scent in the air. It's warm and masculine, with a pleasant hint of some fruit I can't identify. Way too complex to be a normal deodorant. Are you wearing cologne? Huh? Oh, yeah. I use whatever stuff my parents get for me. When I'm not working out, anyway. For some weird reason, they don't like it when I use deodorant. But I'm literally an athlete. I don't have a choice. Interesting. Cologne isn't cheap, and this brand smelled really fancy. You can get closer, you know. I'm not gonna bite. He lays his arms out, biceps, biceps big enough to be pillows. My blush is obvious now, but fuck it. I've already committed. I scooch over a bit more and lay my head down gingerly against his fluffy arm, letting myself sink against it slowly. What's the fruit in your cologne? I can't quite tell. Apricot. One of my favorites. I feel his arm move a little, and he pulls me just a bit closer to him. This okay? Too comfortable to answer, I just nod. He's so warm. I sneak a glance at the phone clutched in his other paw. Looks like he's tapping on some kind of chessboard. I look down at the blanket beneath us. Guess that makes sense. Though, I had to admit, I thought it was Theo's at first. Chess, huh? Are you good? He shakes his head, still focused on the screen. His whiskers tickle my face lightly. Not really. I'm on the college team, but my teammates are all crazy good. Chess team too, huh? I played a ton as a kid. Didn't really like it at first, but for some reason it's pretty popular at my school right now. I don't know much about the game, so I just nod. Neither of us seem to mind the silence anyway. Hunter is focused on his game, and I'm cozy enough not to care. Time passes blissfully, helped along by the soft music. Eventually, Hunter lets out a deep sigh and shifts slightly. Well, that was a bust. I shift as well, and slowly sit up, feeling the urge to stretch. Tough match? He nods. Made too many mistakes early on. It happens. Suddenly, he sits up and sniffs the air, tail twitching. I wonder what's for dinner. My stomach rumbles in response. I remember I hadn't eaten anything at all today. I guess I don't know... I guess I don't know what dinner plans are. It's not like we can order out. Wanna go downstairs and check? Maybe we can grab a snack or two. Sounds good. Hunter leaps to his feet, windmilling his right arm and winking at me. Damn, your head was great at cutting off my circulation. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to... Hey... I'm just kidding. Besides, I was the one who offered. Thanks for hanging with me. 
I give him a playful swat on the arm, unable to hold back a smile. Come on, I want to see what they're up to downstairs. I stand up with a renewed sense of energy. Recharging with Hunter was exactly what I needed. Lead the way! Hunter and I run into Theo on the way down the stairs. Oh, Cobalt! I'm getting your air mattress set up right now. Sorry about the wait, I meant to do this earlier, but I just haven't had time to think about it today. If you don't mind, I think I'll get you settled in the den. You can close the doors to get some privacy when you want it. That sounds great, Theo, thank you. Hey, tell you what. If you guys want, you can head down to the kitchen. There's snacks in pantry there's snacks in the pantry and beer in the fridge. I still need to figure out what dinner will look like, so please help yourself for now. I hear a whirf of excitement and the sound of a fridge door closing. Sounds like someone got into the stash already. A starry-eyed Rofi appears at the foot of the stairwell, canned drinks in one arm and an assortment of colorful chip, ba chip bags in the other. Theo, you didn't tell me you had these cool flavors of soda and chips. I can't pick. His puppy, do his puppy eyes come out again. Theo sighs, but he can't hold back a small, small smile. Well, then feel, feel free to try all of them. Ooh, I am... Let me... <laughs> okay, we're good. I've been having trouble getting through my hoard of junk food anyway. Rofi's tail starts wagging faster, if that was even possible. Whoa, really? There's no way you can finish all these by yourself. I can tell Hunter wants in on the snacks, too. I'm sure there's more than enough for all of you. Why don't you guys hang out a bit more while I figure out dinner? Thank you, Theo. I love you. Oh, I love him. Rofi bounds up the stairs in a flash. Sweet. Thanks, Theo. Hunter does a two-fingered salute to Theo before hopping up the stairs after Rofi. Though Theo shakes his head, his smile and swishing tail reveal that he's quite pleased with Rofi and Hunter's indulgence. He turns to face me again. Not going to join them, Cobalt? Nah, I think I'll hang out in the kitchen and wait for dinner. I don't really want to fight those two for snacks anyway. I have a sneaking suspicion I'd lose. If you say so, I'll go fetch your air mattress and get it set up. I'll just be a minute. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, Theo. My pleasure. We pass one another and I head off to the kitchen, breathing a quiet sigh of relief. Normally I'd be anxious in a situation like this, depending on his generosity, meeting new, pe new people in an unfamiliar place. Whoa. Meeting new people in an unfamiliar place? But Theo, something about him puts me at ease. Maybe it's the sense that he really doesn't expect anything in return. From the way he talks, he makes it sound like I'm doing him a favor by staying here. The kitchen is spacious, but comfortable, lived in, but not cluttered or claustrophobic. My eyes are immediately drawn to the big windows looking out into the small backyard space. Well, they would be showing off the backyard if the snow and ice hadn't rendered them almost fully opaque. I settle down at the big kitchen table and watch the weather try to get in, frosty fingers sliding down the fragile panes of glass. It isn't long before Theo comes back with two folding chairs and starts to set them up. As I watch him work, I absentmindedly rub the old table's surface, my paw pads finding curves and divots impressed into the wood. I trace the path of what feels like a curved letter t cursive letter T, then an H. Peering more closely, I can see the telltale marks of many words, crisscrossing and folding over one, ano one another across the matte surface. Yeah, those are what you think they are. He, crap he cracks open a beer as he talks. This is my aunt's house. I used to come here growing up and do all my homework at this very table. I would always press down really hard when doing cursive and the pencil marked up the surface through the paper. Aunt. My mind drifts back to the photo in the stairwell. Theo and an older arctic fox. He sits down in a seat across from me, and the old wooden chair produces a loud creak. But that was centuries ago, of course. I understand kids these days aren't even learning cursive anymore. Kids these days? He's kidding, right? Theo's eyes twinkle mischievously, clearly watching me for a reaction. Hey, I still had to learn it. It turned out to be useless, of course, but I bet I just I bet I spent just as much time as on it as you did. And a fat lot of good it did us. I always thought it was a waste of time, too. Theo snaps his fingers and stands again. Right, dinner. I can't expect everyone to be happy with just soda and chips. Let's see. 
He starts rummaging through the fridge and cupboards. I hope simple food is okay with you. I'm decent in the kitchen, but... At that moment, Artemis walks carefully through the doorway. Three paper bags balance precariously in his grip. He has the juggling skills of an experienced waiter. What's all this? Some groceries from my place. No point in letting it all rot. Oh, right, right. Yeah, whatever you, whatever you can find room in the fridge. Artemis nods at me in greeting, then begins rummaging around in the bags. Green vegetables, fresh herbs, a bag of apples. Good timing, too. I was just starting to prep for dinner. Artemis shakes his head, his sharp eyes flitting around the kitchen. No, I expect you to let me cook tonight, Theo. It's the least I can do to repay you. Theo blinks, somewhat taken aback. For a moment, he seems like he's about to object. Then he breaks into a warm smile and settles back into his chair with another creak. That's an offer I'll gladly accept. To be honest, cooking for six was the one thing I was worried about. I make a mean dinner for one, but anything past that. He chuckles softly, shaking his head. Well, where do you keep your spices? The, the bird pulls a, a couple of containers out of a smallest bag. Garlic powder, paprika, pepper, and a few others I didn't recognize. I feel, I feel a pang of guilt at the sight. If I hadn't been ready to leave town, I'd have some food to contribute too. Just as Theo starts to answer, Hunter strides into the kitchen, an open chip bag in one paw and a phone in the other. He walks up to me and holds out both. Here, Cobalt. Put your number in. I'm starting a group chat. Also have a chip if you want. Oh, sure. No problem. As I'm typing in my number, he turns to Theo and rattles the bag. These things are amazing, Theo. You gotta tell me where you get them sometime. Theo gives him a thumbs up and takes another swig of his beer. I hand Hunter back his phone. I'm honestly not sure how much of a group chat will get used, but whatever. You two as well. I mean, we'll all be stuck in the same house. Do we really need a group chat? Why not? Just in case. You're Theo. As soon as Theo finishes, Hunter plucks the phone out of his paw and walks over to Artemis. Come on, please! Artemis takes the phone after a long moment of Hunter waving it in his face. Just please don't message it without a good reason. I hate getting tons of notifications. Yeah, yeah, I hear ya. Anyway, let me go find Ollie. He marches out of the room at a considerable clip. Does he always move this fast? He could give Rofi a run for his money. Not 30 seconds later, all of our phones buzz. Artemis lets out a theatrical sigh. What did I just say? Theo and I laugh in unison. The bird shakes his head disapprovingly and resumes rifling around the fridge. Hey, Artemis. I can give you a hand if you want. I, I realize six is a lot of people to cook for. He regards me for a split second, then shakes his head. It's really no problem. I like to cook. You can just sit and relax. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and end it here, but I'm sure you will all know who I choose since I am obsessed with Artemis here. I love him. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and next episode will likely be the last episode of Promises to Keep for now. So anyway, thank you all for watching. Bye bye